Hello and welcome to this build guide video for Kerbal Space Program 2. Uh, this is for the For Science update and this rocket is what we are going to be building in this video. Now this is a lunar rocket which is capable of landing on the surface of the moon and getting us back to Kerbin safely and it is built using only tier 1 parts. So as you can see I have done an exploded version of the rocket just so you can see all of the different stages in their individual configurations and the way that I typically build a rocket like this is I like to start big at the bottom and then get gradually smaller the further up you go so the idea is that as you progress through the mission you're actually using up all of the fuel and then once that fuel is gone we can jettison the tanks and the engines reducing the weight of the overall rocket making the next set of engines more efficient um, now the other thing that i usually try and aim for when doing a build like this is i like to try and have them so that each stage gets gradually smaller as you go up the rocket so as you can see the core stage is by far the biggest uh, that will get us up into a suborbital trajectory above Kerbin. Then the next stage would get us into an orbital trajectory around Stur Kerbin and obviously to the moon and in orbit around there as well. And then the next stage is the stage that we'll use to land and ascend from the surface of the moon. And then the final stage will get us back to Kerbin. So it's a nice easy way to visualize which part of the rocket does which part of the mission and as i was saying when you are getting rid of parts of the rocket throughout the mission you're actually reducing the overall weight of the rocket as well which subsequently makes each subsequent set of engines more efficient when it comes to performing whichever maneuvers they need to perform so less weight more fuel efficiency is the general idea here so before we can build this rocket we do actually need to buy a bit of tech so we're going to go into the research and development building and we're going to start off by buying the lights and utilities uh, the reaction control system and we're also going to buy power launchers and because that is the last node on the top level of tier one it now means we've unlocked tier two but as i say this rocket is only going to use tier one uh, now you can buy more of these if you want none of them are necessary for this build uh, you might want to buy struts because it's always good to have struts but i'm going to leave them off for the time being and yeah we might as well go straight back to the vehicle assembly building and start the build so let's get started building our first tier one moon rocket or moon lander even. So for this build, we're gonna start off as usual with the Mark 1 tin can. And just like in any of my previous builds, we're going to add a Mark 16 parachute to the top, two Mark 12s to the side. We'll then go to science, grab the science junior, pop that on the bottom of the command module and then add a heat shield and four extra small solar panels so as i've said this is going to be the section of the rocket which will return us from lunar orbit back to Kerbin. so it only needs to be small um, however we are going to start off with going to utility and grabbing the small reaction wheel and popping that on the bottom although of course we do need to make sure we've got a couple of there first then we're going to go to fuel tanks and we're going to grab the flr 25 monopropellant tank and pop that there and for the main methalox tanks we're just going to use an flt 100 and an flt 200 for the engine we'll use the terrier now, of course, we are going to need some RCS thrusters for this as well. So for that, for that we go to utilities and we're going to use the RV-105 RCS thruster blocks. And we're going to pop four of these on the side of the monopropellant tank. So when you are actually creating your monopropellant thrusters one way that you can actually get them nice and central is if you go onto the bottom of the screen you will see these three icons which refer to our center of thrust center of mass and center of pressure so for this we only need the center of mass and you can see we now have this little black and yellow 
ball and generally the rule of thumb is you want to have your RCS thrusters somewhere around the intersection of the um, black and yellow segments of the ball so we could move them upwards a little bit and get them perfectly in line although of course as you are burning throughout the mission um, the fuel tanks will empty so it will affect the center of mass but generally if you aim to have them somewhere in the middle of the yellow and black ball you should have a generally centralized RCS control so we'll turn that off and now we are going to move on to the next section which is the landing portion of this rocket so for this we'll start off with the stack decoupler and then we're going to go to structures and we're going to grab the TVR200 stack bicoupler uh, which is a little used part uh, I've never really seen anybody using it but we are going to use it for this mission because we want to be copying or mirroring each of our each half of the rocket side to side so we're actually going to start off on symmetry one with this um, and i'll explain why in a moment but for the fuel tanks we'll grab the flt 200 and flt 400 then for the engine we're going to use the terrier engine and because this is the landing portion we do want some landing legs as well so if we go to ground we can grab the small Wallaroo landing legs and we're going to pop four of these on the bottom of this tank. And the reason we're only in Symmetry 1 at the moment um, was because now if we go to Radial Symmetry and select this portion of the assembly then you'll see that it automatically duplicates them across the rocket. So we'll pop them there and now we have eight landing legs on the bottom. Uh, the reason we did it that way is because if you were to add landing legs now and try and do four times symmetry you can see that they aren't lining up properly so we do one half of it first and then we'll just copy it across to the second half but the only other thing we really need to do on this section of the rocket now is add a couple more rcs thrusters because as you can see the center of mass is now much much lower so we're going to try and space a couple more thrusters roughly equilaterally from the center of this ball on the bottom of the rocket so we'll go to utility and grab the rcs thrusters and then we can pop them down here and then do more on the other side uh, however we now only have these little thrusters here doing the up and down adjustments uh, which we don't want we want a little bit more uh, flexibility over our maneuvers otherwise it'll be trying to push the top of the rocket over anytime you try to move up and down so what we'll do is we're actually going to put these thrusters on at an angle about 45 degrees and that should give us a relatively all-around coverage of thrust directions So as I said, because we will be using some fuel in this, when it comes to actually using RCS, the center of mass will have raised up a little bit. So that looks pretty much like it would be central to where we want the RCS thrusters to be. You can spend a lot of time trying to get your RCS thrusters absolutely perfect, but I find it's just easier to throw them in uh, as and where you need them. And then what you can do is if you right click on an RCS thruster, you can then go to advanced controls and turn off pitch and yaw and that should just mean that now all the thru RCS thrusters will be doing is our translation and roll we won't be changing our pitch or yaw if you'd like me to go into more details as to what translation and uh, attitude adjustments mean just let me know in the comments and I'll do a little video on that for you but anyway that is pretty much all we need to do for the actual lander so now that's ready, we're going to go down to the next stage and this stage is going to be getting us to the, well to orbit around the moon and it will also do the final parts of our circularization and orbital burns around Kerbin. So for this we're going to start off as usual with the decouplers and then we're going to go and we're going to grab the TVR200 by decoupler again and we're going to pop two of these on the bottom there and as I say because we are in radial symmetry mode it will automatically mirror them now for the fuel tanks 
it's a simple one as this. We just want to go to fuel tanks and grab the FLT 800. Make sure there are four underneath there. And then we'll go to engines and we're going to grab the Terrier engine again and pop four of these on the bottom of that stage. Now, this is the point where you might think you'll start needing to add struts. Uh, if you do add struts, all you really need to do is add them at the bottom, but we're not going to add struts on this rocket because it turns out it does work without struts, um, providing you are relatively careful with your with your launch. Anyway, so that is all we need for that section. Now we're going to move on to the main core stage, so we'll once again add some decouplers onto the bottom of the engines. And for the tanks, we'll go and we'll start off with an FLT-200 tank. We're then going to grab the FLT-800. We'll do another 200 and an 800. So it goes 2828. And then we'll go for the FLT-400 for the bottom. And of course, we need to make these symmetrical as well. So as I said before, we'll hold Alt on our keyboards and click. And that will copy the part and then you can just place that where you want it to do and now we have our main core stage although we do still need the engines of course so for the engines we're going to just use the trusty old swivel engines make sure we've got four of them on the bottom and that's the main core part of the rocket so the only other thing that we will want to do on the core is add some fins. Uh, now you don't necessarily need fins but I find it's always a good idea to have some control surfaces just to give you a bit more control while you're in the atmosphere. I'm going to place four of these on the side trying to make sure that they are at roughly the same level. Make sure they are nice and symmetrical. And now we need to add the solid rocket boosters on the side. Now, because we've actually got four separate tanks on the bottom as opposed to one central one, it can be a little bit awkward trying to get them perfectly central. However, the best way I've found to get close is if we go to coupling and grab the TT38K radial decoupler and place that on one of these two tanks, making sure our symmetry is at radial. We can then, if we go to the 90 degrees point, we can then go in towards the centre by two notches and that will give us a relatively central positioning of the solid rocket boosters. So for those, we are going to go to engines, of course, and we're actually going to use the kickback solid fuel booster for this. So we'll place that on the decoupler. We can see now, if we look down, it is pretty central. It might be a little bit over to one side, but that shouldn't cause too much of an issue. You can, like as I say, tweak it to your heart's content to make it perfectly circular. But you do need to be careful not to have it too far over to one side or the other because then it can make the launch a bit difficult and a bit unstable. But that's all we really need to do for this. Uh, the only other things we're going to do is we're going to add some nose cones to the top. And now when you are doing side boosters like this, it's always a good idea to use the separation motors as well because the decoupler doesn't kick it away from the main core of the rocket hard enough and there is a risk that they could drift back in on themselves and either hit the engines or cause some damage at the bottom of the rocket which we don't want happening obviously so what we'll do is we will grab the separatron one we're going to go to the top of one of the solid rocket boosters and make sure that the black portion on the tip of the motor is pointed in towards the rocket. And we're actually going to use four at the top. And we're going to use two at the bottom. And the reason we're only using two at the bottom as opposed to four at the top is because this way, then when we jettison the solid tanks, the top of the booster will actually kick away harder than the bottom, which means it'll fall away in a nice, easy profile. And uh, apart from the fact that it looks good, it means there's much less likelihood 
of the tank actually drifting or spinning into the main core of the rocket. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to building this rocket. Now, I'm going to go through the staging stack next, which is a little bit more complicated on this rocket because we have so many separate parts. Uh, I'm also going to do a little bit of detail and detailing on the rocket as well, just to get everything in the position that I like it to be in. And then once that's done, we will take you through the staging stack and uh, finish off this build. Okay, so now all that's done, I'll just take you through what I did. Um, so we'll begin with the staging stack. As I say, it's always the most important part of any build is arranging your staging stack. Because quite often if you find you're having trouble with the launch and something isn't quite going right, it's usually something's in the wrong place on the staging stack. So for this particular build, we are beginning with the four core engines, the six launch clamps and the two solid rocket boosters all in stage one then we have the decoupler and the separation motors on the solid rocket boosters in two and then it's just a matter of grouping up all of the engines in the next couple of stages and making sure that they are in the same stage as the related decouplers and uh, of course all the way up until our parachutes so as you can see i've added also added some launch clamps and did a bit of tweaking uh, including moving the drogue parachutes in a little bit uh, the solar panels of course are nice and flush as well I also clipped the tanks together a little bit on the return portion because it just makes it a little bit shorter and of course you don't want your lander to be too tall otherwise there is a chance that it will uh, end up falling over and then the only other thing I did was I positioned the separation motors so they're actually pointed out at a slight angle because that just means it's a little bit more controlled during the jettisoning process. Uh, if you have them at 90 degrees, it's, it will still do the trick, it just this way I find it does it a little bit better. And like I said, the way I did that was I just literally moved them out from the 90 degree mark by one notch. Uh, it's as simple as that so yeah that is pretty much all there is to building this rocket uh, like I said this is our first tier 1 moon lander it will get us all the way to the moon and back and you can actually reuse this rocket if you want so you can use this for the next mission and it's possible that this rocket will probably even get you to Minmus and back so you could potentially use this rocket for the next few missions uh, however we are only going to use it for one mission to start off with as I say this one's going to be uh, in part four of the series where we are landing on the moon for the first time but um, yeah hopefully you enjoyed this build guide if you did then please feel free to like and subscribe and maybe even check out some of my other videos I do have a series of tutorials which could be quite handy so I recommend checking them out but um, yeah otherwise I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one